neurobiologist had discovered that monkeys are constantly making new brain cells in the hippocampus, an area of the brain used for forming long-term memories. For years prior to this, scientists had clung to the idea that once animals or people reach adulthood, they can never grow new brain cells. Now, experts back in March said humans are no different, and I bet that they will make new brain cells in adult life, too. Last March, they were saying neurobiologists must rethink their notions of how the brain changes with learning or life experiences. And this new study was by Dr. Elizabeth Gould of Princeton University, and uh, she estimated that thousands of new brain cells were being made uh, each day. In adult mice, for instance, she thought they made 5,000 to 10,000 new brain cells each hour. Well, that's the background. Now, just this week, a few days ago, the latest discovery. What's true of monkeys and mice has been actually discovered to be true of human beings. Uh, a team of American and Swedish scientists reported yesterday, that's, I, guess, I think Thursday or Friday, that they had actually discovered the generation of brain cells in adult humans for the first time. The door has been opened, said Dr. Fred Gage, the team leader at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in San Diego. Well, what they discovered is that undeveloped primitive cells in the human brain had divided and continue to divide. It's not clear yet whether these primitive cells are actually what they call stem cells which have a powerful capacity in the formative stages of brain development for generating neurons that have a wide variety of functions, or whether their capacity is more limited. But something major has been discovered. The brain grows throughout life under the right circumstances. Dr. Gage and his group had earlier found that if they enhanced the living environments of the mice, by giving them more space, more toys and fellow mice to play with, the mice produced more new brain cells and performed better in behavioral tests. This, Dr. Gage and others said, indicates that there may be a way to manipulate the new cell growth in humans as well. Now, does this have philosophic implications? Do you see that this seems to suggest that we have at our disposal a way to grow our brains and we have it throughout life? I'm not a scientist. I preach that philosophy should not interfere with science. There's a line between them. But there is an irresistible implication here that ties in to our ordinary life knowledge. Ayn Rand said to me years ago, 20 years ago, way before any of this research, she said, we should be able to compare the brain to a muscle. We know in the case of a muscle that the more you exercise it, the more it grows, builds up, the stronger it gets. And similarly, that the less you exercise it, the more it tends to atrophy, dry up, become weak. Why shouldn't the same be true? She, I remember her asking aloud once about the brain. And then she gave the example. She said, so many people, uh, their brain power diminishes as they get older and older. But it's obviously not true of everybody. She said, my brain power is getting better and better uh, as I get older. So it's not inherent in age. Why is it? In isn't the obvious correlation, or at least one of them, that when people get old, they tend to get in a rut and lose interest, retire, and of course, retirement means usually an early death. Well, what if it were true for the brain also? That if you retire from exercise of the brain, if you retire from thought, it means an early cognitive death. 
it means that your brain starts to atrophy. It, she was hypothesizing this, not really as a serious hypothesis, but just wondering aloud 20 years ago. And now they have biological evidence that under certain conditions, favorable conditions, conditions where the mice and so on can actively use their, their capacities, their brains actually grow. Does this tell us something? Well, if it b is borne out in subsequent uh, scientific study that there's a correlation between thinking and brain growth, then that would be, in scientific terms, a proof of Ayn Rand's philosophy. It would be a biological proof of objectivism because it would mean that the essence of virtue, virtue for Ayn Rand being thinking, actually grows your brain. Whereas it would mean, on the other hand, a biological refutation of all forms of mysticism, faith. People would tell you, just blindly obey the Bible, sacrifice your own understanding. These people would be literally shrinking and killing their brains. So, the moral of this discovery You've got a brain. You know it grows. It's been proved now that it can grow right on through your life, thousands of new cells. We know that thinking is required to cope with reality. What about as a bonus that the more you think, the bigger your brain and the greater your capacity to deal with reality, whereas the more you capitulate to the conventional view, the dumber you get and the smaller your brain. Is that not horrifying? Therefore, the moral I draw, provision, just so far on the basis of the evidence is, don't let your brain sink into routine. Use it. Tax it. Make demands on it. Exercise it. Think. And who knows, you may soon be boasting that you've got the biggest real organ that counts in this world.